Today is March 24, 2006. This is Los Angeles. The population exceeds 10 million people. In the year 2000, the median value of a Los Angeles home was $209,000. Today, that number has more than doubled to over $500,000, leaving more and more people without homes. Rising population, increased health care costs, higher gas prices, and unobtainable home values are obvious. They are easy to see. But is there a hidden compression in the entire economy, one occurring at all levels, not just at the bottom? Well, I uh, graduated from California State University with a bachelor's degree in studio arts, which is fine arts. And uh, I did it last June, I graduated. And uh, for the past nine months, it's been, you know, I, I really don't understand. I had a better job while I was in school. And after school, I thought, you know, the doors will you know, eventually open for me, which it hasn't happened. And I think there's a, like, it's just the, the outsourcing of jobs. And um, I, I guess the lack of, uh, of, of resources out there, that it's kind of difficult, you know? Corporations have shipped an estimated 830,000 white-collar jobs overseas, and some estimates say up to 14 million middle-class jobs could be exported out of America in the next 10 years. 2.8 million manufacturing jobs have been lost since the Bush administration took office. Meanwhile, Jobs being created in the U.S. are often low-wage jobs that don't offer health coverage or ensure retirement security. Nearly one-quarter of the nation's workers labor in jobs that pay less than the $8.85 per hour the government says it takes to keep a family of four out of poverty. Sixty percent of such workers are women, and many are people of color. About 10 bucks an hour, that's how much they were offering and that and the requirement to work there was you had to have a bachelor's degree in some soft science. So during my interview, you know, I talked to the director and I tell him, oh, I have a degree. He's like, oh, okay, that's great. Let me think about it. Hmm. Well, I'll give you about 25 cents more, you know, because you have a degree. So I was like, okay, that's kind of crazy. You know, I have a degree, I should get paid more than that. But given my situation and how desperate I was to have a job and provide for my son, I had to go ahead and take it. And um, after working there for about a year and a half, we were all laid off. Compared to 20 years ago, we are a more educated society. There are more women in the workforce. Computers play a role in the sale of almost any product or service. Information is readily available with the stroke of a few fingers on a keyboard. Uh, we physically visit about 850 law firms on a daily basis, providing court filing in a physical sense, pick up and drop off documents to and from the courts. Typical day, we might handle two to 3,000 filings. Well, e-filing is essentially uh, a mechanism that allows for documents that are created digitally sitting on somebody's hard drive in you know, wherever their offices might be uh, to send that, uh, that, that data and that document uh, to the courts in an electronic format. As many as 50 percent of the documents presented in the federal courts today are already being filed. The civil and state uh, Superior Municipal Limited courts uh, throughout the country. It's 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 not that far along. It's probably closer to four or five percent, but it's it's growing exponentially every year. So those that don't adapt to the changing technologies and find a way to make it work for them, or look at other ways to generate revenue streams. Um, may cease to exist. I mean, there's a lot of questions as to, you know, will we be successful in, in, in surviving in this, this changing uh, economy and, and uh, technologies. But have these factors in the exporting of jobs outside America led to greater competition and less work in the U.S.? Is this a recession or is this compression? 40 some odd years. 
Uh, when I was younger, in my 20s and 30s, and I'd go, you know, apply for jobs, I'd get interviews right off the bat. Almost every single person that I contacted interviewed me physically. I had many offers for jobs. I was able to pick and choose. It didn't seem difficult at all. And at the time, I did not have the degrees that I have. It just seemed like it wasn't a big deal. You just go for an interview, get the job, and go work there. Now, <laughs> you can look for years, and again, it could be my age, but I have these degrees. I am very qualified. I got straight A's in my master's program. I, I graduated with distinction, and this is on my resume. Uh, and with the bachelor's, I graduated cum laude, and it, it doesn't matter. You know, it's like they look at it and they go, okay, so big deal. And the current job that I have, I'm very happy with, but unfortunately, they're underpaying me, so I have to work two jobs. And my second job is a menial job. It doesn't even reflect what I can do with my education and with my intelligence. So it's very, very frustrating. Uh, there was a recession in the early 90s. Um, people really started to feel the pinch, but I was very lucky that I was working at a firm and actually getting paid $7,000 less than what I'm getting paid now at my job in 1991. This is already 2006. There's something very wrong with that picture. And at that time, I also did not have these two degrees that I just told you about. So to only have $7,000 less without the two degrees, I mean, what can I tell you? It doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I was even thinking of getting a PhD, and then I said, what am I gonna spend all this money for? Another $40,000 in debt, and there isn't a promise of a job at the end. The technology has made it so that the competition is so huge that companies are, are just absolutely just clawing at trying to keep their place, having to come up with new ideas all the time and be very innovative in what they're doing. The employees are a necessary evil, I think, is what they, the way they look at us. We're just there because we have to be there. If we didn't have to be there, we wouldn't be there. Ultimately, Compression in the U.S. economy affects freedom. Freedom in job selection, job location, job retention, and job wages. Money affects freedom. What we do is, this is how I got through school. And, you know, and getting our jobs and stuff. Is that we just pick up, we go through alleys picking up trash or whatever. You know, the residual from the environment, alleys and stuff. And then we just pick them up and then we just, uh, have like a yard sub here. And people come and buy it for five bucks here, a dollar there. And that's how I make my living. <laughs>